Hey guys, and welcome back into the kitchen for another Jake Bakes. Uh, when I was first learning to bake, I really focused on breads because I think they're some of the most intimidating techniques and recipes out there. But I wanted to share this one with you for a very delicious hollow loaf. It is a golden braided delicious loaf that is absolutely stunning and really just uses a very basic recipe. I can't wait to get started, so let's get in the kitchen and let's get baking. Now I said this was a very basic recipe, so we've got all our ingredients right here. What we're gonna need is two and a half cups of warm water. We don't want it hot, just warm. And to that, I'm going to add a package of active dry yeast, just a little bit of uh, salt, about a teaspoon and a half. And then we also wanna add a little sweetness to this. So we're gonna add about a half a cup of honey. Just watch it drizzle for a half cup. This will help to actually feed the yeast a little bit and allow it to rise a little bit more. To this, we're gonna add three eggs. Eggs are gonna add some moisture and also structure to the recipe. And then we'll give this a little whisk together. We just wanna break up the yolks. This is the other reason why you wanna use warm water and not hot water. You don't wanna scramble your eggs or cook your eggs at all. You just want them to be in there. And we're gonna go ahead and mix all of our wet into about five cups of all-purpose flour. Typically, I'll start with five, I'll add the wet in, and then as soon as it starts to come together to a shaggy dough that's still very, very soft, I will start to add a cup after a cup of flour until it comes together perfectly. So make a little bit of a well, and pour all of our wet in. And this is gonna make a lot of dough. You can use a, um, an actual stand mixer, but for those of you at home that are have like an artisan uh, stand mixer, those are gonna be a little too small for this recipe. So I usually do this by hand. This is a great dough too, to help you learn what dough should feel like um, when you're actually using it and kneading it. It's a great way to learn. This is all coming together nicely. Sprinkle a little flour on the board and then just turn all of this out. Keep the flour next to you handy though, because it's still gonna be very, very wet. I'm not even able to pick it up right now. And this way you can just work in more flour until it becomes nice and pliable. So we are actually pretty good. With that flour that I put on the board too, probably ended up using about six cups of flour. During the summer, your flour is typically going to have a little bit more moisture, so you won't need to add as much water to it. And if it's during the winter, you might need to add a little bit more flour because your flour is gonna be drier. Once it starts to come together like this, we wanna knead this for about 15 minutes until it becomes perfectly smooth and elastic. Our dough is nicely proofed. It looks great. It has doubled in size. So we wanna go ahead and turn this out. There we go. And now we wanna divide this dough in half. And you don't wanna tear the dough, you wanna cut the dough. We are gonna do two loaves. One of them's gonna be a three plat and the other is going to be a six plat. To do the three plat, we're gonna just divide this into threes. So I think of it like a half um, half circle that we're cutting in to thirds. And we are gonna go ahead and roll these into little snakes. Now, to do the three plat, you're gonna go ahead and just pull these down. This guy's a little bit thicker, but that's okay. And basically tack these down. So push all three down here, just like you would with a normal, like braiding of hair. I like to pull them a little bit tighter. So, that way. And then when you come to the very end, you're gonna tack it down. And what I do, just to make them nice, is I cut off the ends on each side, grab each end, and just kind of give it a nice roll, and tuck them underneath. And there you have the three plat. Now, if you wanna get a little fancy, I will show you how to do a six plat. So same thing we did with the three plat. We wanna make, kinda of tack these down. 
then you are gonna wanna spread these out. There are lots of different ways to do plats uh, in researching this and kind of learning how to plat. One of the ways I find most successful is to just kind of name these. So we'll say A, B, C, D, E, F. Take B, swing it all the way to the far left. A goes to the middle. F goes far right. B goes to the middle. And then you'll just keep continuing to do this, but you're renaming them every time you do it. B goes far left. A goes to the middle. You want to keep these tight as you go too. F goes far right. B goes to the middle. And you'll continue doing this until you're all the way done. And at the very end, so this is already a pretty long braid. What I'll do is cut off the end here. I'm gonna turn this, kind of pinch these down, pinch this down and cut off that little excess. And what we'll do is just roll these nicely like this, tuck them under, and we have our six plat. We're gonna let this proof for about an hour, just until it starts to get nice and puffy and hold its shape when I push it in. Our loaves are nicely proofed. If you press them, see how they don't really have an indention? It's perfect. We are going to liberally brush these with an egg wash, just an egg that um, I've cracked and went ahead and mixed. This is gonna give that its really nice characteristic deep brown sheen. These will be really shiny when they come out. You can add sesame seeds or poppy seeds on top if you want. Because this recipe makes two, I'll do one with poppy seeds and one without. And we will get this in the oven at 375 for about 40 minutes until it's nice and when you tap it, it's a little bit hollow sounding. All right, these look amazing. They are just absolute showstoppers. They're so shiny, they're beautiful, and they're wonderful as like centerpieces. I've added a little bit of accoutrement to it. So I've got some cheese and some honey and some butter, but I think really the best thing is to just give this a taste. Oh, yeah. And you can see this is a wonderful texture inside too. And it's, mm. it's slightly sweet. This is gonna make the best French toast. And I just need like turkey and make like a turkey sandwich with it. Guys, if you liked this video, like I know you're going to love this challah bread, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you here next time on another Jake Bakes. It's better a carb. Get some carb loading today.